testing? Hello? Yeah. Is that better? Okay, so I'm going to start. It's 12 o'clock now. And uh, I'm going to be talking about JavaScript charting using YUI Flot. Uh, who here is a JavaScript programmer? Okay. Um, what is your interest in this talk? Everyone? Who's here just because they're curious? Cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is who I am. Uh, my name is Philip Tellis. That's a very dark picture of me, and uh, that's how you can reach me. I work at Yahoo. I'm a geek. I've been an open source developer for over 10 years. And uh, I'm Blues Moon on Twitter and uh, most social networks. So, charting. What's this talk all about? Uh, charting options for web developers, primarily JavaScript-based charting, um, because that's what I do. Uh, JavaScript charting with YUI Flot. Uh, what I learned while building this and how you can contribute to the project. Okay. Um, who here contributes to an open source project? Who? What kind of projects? Who, who does it on the front end? Good ones, Good ones yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, why do you need charting on the web? For me, uh, I, that's the way I deliver content to my users. Okay, my users are actually all internal to Yahoo, but uh, I deliver content to them using the web because uh, so much of the infrastructure already built for me. I don't have to go and build a window and several widgets and stuff. It's all there. I just use HTML. Uh, the data I need is also on the web. And it's easy for me to send uh, users to a particular page. I just send them a URL, they get it. And if I find a bug there, I can fix it without actually having to send them a new URL. So they get that data out. And it's a little more portable than my manager sending me an Excel spreadsheet that I can't open. <laughs> so <clears throat> That's why I get charts on the web. now. What are the alternatives uh, to doing charting on the web? So initially, uh, I used to use static images. So there are several libraries, uh, depending on what language you want to use. So PHP has a bunch of uh, libraries. Uh, what programming languages do people use on the back end? JavaScript, JavaScript on the back end. <laughs> Python? Java. Java? Anybody does? Uh, CGI scripts in C, C and C++? Yes. <laughs> okay, so regardless of what language you use, there is a charting library on the back end. Uh, and if there isn't, use Google Charts, uh, hit the REST API, pull down the PNG, and serve it to your users uh, so that Google doesn't figure out your referrer. <laughs> okay, that's what I do. Uh, there's Flash-based dynamic charts. so. The thing with the image, static images is they're static, right? The user sees the chart, they can uh, download that image, uh, email it to each other, but they can't really interact with it. They can't uh, drill down into the data, they can't uh, roll up and stuff like that. So you move to dynamic charts, which is uh, one of the options is Flash, which can pull data from the server in real time and uh, change the chart. It can do funky things like animate your chart and uh, Managers really like it, <laughs> but I don't uh, for several reasons. Uh, one was uh, well, I develop primarily on Linux, and every time I use Flash, it grabs the focus of my page, so I'm hitting tab and nothing's happening. <laughs> so that was one reason. The bigger reason is that if I need to change something, I don't like. Uh, I want to add a feature to the chart. I can't actually go into the Flash and change that because uh, I don't know how to write code in Flash, <laughs> but I know JavaScript, so. Uh, that was the third option I looked at, and, uh, and actually, th this is how I actually progressed and got into JavaScript charting. So uh, JavaScript with Canvas, so by default, JavaScript can't really draw things, but once you add in the Canvas tag, which uh, all really cool browsers support, uh, you can draw pretty lines, and lines uh, go on to give you charts. So you can do that. A um, couple of weeks ago, a friend of mine, a colleague at Yahoo, uh, Christian Heilman, 
developed CSS only charts. So he draws bar charts using CSS. Uh, and they work well for him. I don't uh, do that stuff. And uh, many years ago, back in the early 2000s, I used to draw charts using HTML tables and set the background color of the cell and <laughs> cell height and stuff like that. So don't do that anymore. <laughs> Image-based charts, so the many charting libraries uh, kind of works in all browsers. Uh, if you have a text-based browser, you can still download the image and uh, view it offline or something. Uh, it's probably not accessible, but when we're dealing with charts, uh, we need to make alternate arrangements for making the data available. Um, <coughs> you can't easily interact with the data, yeah, things I've already mentioned. So Flash is uh, pretty. It uh, works on most GUI-based browsers with the plugin. The problem with the plugin is, is also uh, most instability with browsers is because of plugins. Uh, it doesn't work on the iPhone, uh, last I heard. Does anyone know if that's changed? <laughs> there is that uh, Flash, uh, JavaScript-based Flash runtime, which could make it possible. <laughs> yeah, Gordon. <laughs> so. It may work, I, I don't know, but uh, last I heard it uh, doesn't work on the iPhone, which for many people is uh, a big uh, downside. Uh, grabs the focus, which for me is the big problem. Uh, it's Flash on its own is fast, but when you want to interact with it through JavaScript, there's that uh, Flash to JavaScript bridge, which is, uh, can be slow, especially when you're doing two-way interaction. So for example, you want to attach a JavaScript-based event handler to a Flash event, uh, that's really slow. And uh, another cool thing is you can progressively enhance a data table. So you have data in an HTML table. You can tell your Flash to uh, read the data out of that using some kind of tool kit. Uh, JavaScript-based charting libraries. So it's easy for any JavaScript developer to hack. Uh, I think that there are more JavaScript developers than Flash developers. I'm, uh, I don't have exact numbers on that, but uh, Based on whatever I've seen across uh, various conferences and uh, discussion lists, it seems to be the case. Uh, it's based on open standards, so the canvas element is now part of uh, the HTML5 specification. Uh, JavaScript already has, uh, is part of the ECMAS specification. Uh, it doesn't natively work with Internet Explorer, which I'm, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> but uh, you can get it to work with uh, using the EX canvas library. So uh, if you really need to support Internet Explorer, that's the, you have an option available to you. It's easy to integrate with other JavaScript libraries. So if you're using Dojo, or you're using jQuery, you're using YUI or MoTools, uh, that's already JavaScript. You have your data in JavaScript in a JavaScript data structure. It's easy to dump it into a JavaScript-based charting library. And again, it can progressively enhance a data table uh, using whatever uh, kind of data accessor your library provides you. Uh, CSS only charts, uh, I don't have internet access here, or I'd show you that, but uh, that's a URL you can go to if you want to see what it looks like. Yeah, icant.co.uk uh, CSS charts. Very simple code, it's a list item and uh, CSS to enhance that into a, uh, a chart. The uh, thing is your data needs to be encoded twice, once in the actual the data that you display and the other in the style sheet. And currently, he only supports vertical bar charts. I think he could do horizontal bar charts too, but uh, I don't think uh, anything else. Um, well, I'm sure creative people can figure out to do how to do polygons with divs and borders and stuff. <laughs> then you may as well write Doom, right? So what is flot? Has anyone heard of flot before? One, two, three, four. Does anyone here work on flot? No? All right. <laughs> So Flot is this uh, charting library written for jQuery. It's really cool, it's, uh, it's pretty, which is what we all like Flash for, but it doesn't have any of those downsides of Flash. Right? It's, uh, uh, it was developed by a company named uh, Iola, I forget what uh, I-O-L-A stands for, um, and it's released under an MIT license, yeah, which is pretty free. Uh, uses the HTML canvas tag for drawing charts. Uh, it's really smooth, very pretty, and uses EX canvas to work on Internet Explorer. So uh, if I remember correctly, it currently supports uh, 
Firefox versions 2 and above, Internet Explorer versions 6 and above, Opera and Safari, um, and Conqueror. Yes, those are the five browsers that are listed on its homepage. So YUI Flot also uh, supports all of those. <coughs> so why did I like it? It looks, uh, it's look, looks good, and since my primary uh, use of charts is to uh, get other people, uh, mainly managers in, the, in my company, to look at performance-related data, I need a nice way to make them interested in that data so that they say, okay, here's some more money and go and improve your performance. <laughs> so I need my charts to look pretty, otherwise they'll never look at them. Uh, there's a good event model, so when you do things uh, interacting with the chart, it fires uh, events that you can then attach your own handlers to and react to that. Uh, it's fast at drawing and redrawing, so something that I didn't see before, but you can draw a chart and then redraw the whole chart and it's uh, it's almost instantaneous, except on Internet Explorer. Uh, and uh, Flot has this ability to zoom into sections, so it has a selection model. You can select a subsection of the graph and then zoom into that subsection. Um, you need to do things through events, but uh, there's example code that does it, and it's like three or four lines of code, and you can do that, which again is important if you want to drill down into the data. And that's something I could not do in any of the Flash-based uh, libraries that I looked at. So, why did I port it to YUI? Now, I work at Yahoo. Uh, I've been using YUI before it was released to the public, so it's pretty much uh, hard-coded into my brain. I, I know how to write code in YUI, and uh, when I write a JavaScript, uh, when I work on JavaScript, the first library I pick is YUI. So, um, when I needed a charting widget, I was looking around. Uh, YUI charts is obviously available, but I had uh, problems with that because of uh, the flash. I used it for a few months and then decided to look at something else. So Flot uh, was available. It had a very good community. So if you look at the, it's on Google code, and you can look at the forums, and there's a lot of uh, discussions, many people sending in patches and stuff. So uh, that was something I liked about it, and uh, I realized even if Flot itself didn't have a feature I needed, somebody would have written a plugin or written a patch for it that I could then import. And um, since I was already working with JavaScript and I knew JavaScript, uh, I'm not a JavaScript expert, but I knew some amount of JavaScript, so I could uh, uh, take a JavaScript library and if I needed to fix something, I could go into the code and figure it out and change things. So. That's uh, why I picked Flot and why I ported it to YUI. So what can we do? Uh, section two. Um, well, you can do a bunch of things. I'm not going to look at all of them. I can show you some of the examples that we have. Uh, random scatter plots. Now, if you look at that data set there, it's not in order. So there's uh, random points that are just in any kind of order. and uh, It'll plot it on a chart. There's, uh, it doesn't draw lines between it, so you won't go like zigzagging through the chart, but uh, you will get nice points. And these are useful if you want to see where your data is clustered. So if you have like uh, 10,000, 30,000 points, it actually is fairly comfortable drawing that many points on the chart, and you get a good idea of uh, where things are. Now, when you get to too many points, uh, you have uh, an obvious limitation. If your screen width is uh, 1,024 pixels and you want to draw 2,000 points, uh, each point is going to be half a pixel wide. Right? And you can't plot half a pixel. So uh, one of the things I did with YUI Flot was try to figure out uh, what's the optimum number of points that can fit in and drop points in between those. So it works, uh, uh, it works sort of. But when you're drawing scatter plots, so since you don't actually have a linear progression, it's, uh, you don't always want to drop points. So there's an option in there to turn that off. Uh, you can draw a simple series. So the best example of a series is a time series, where your x-axis is uh, increasing in uh, constant steps. So in this case, it's uh, one day at a time. And your y-axis could be anything. Uh, the thing about what I added to YUI Flot is uh, it doesn't just take in timestamps, it can also take in date objects and uh, 
plot your x-axis based on that. Uh, resolution is in seconds, unlike in plot, which is in microsec uh, sorry, milliseconds. Uh, and the reason I did that was uh, most backend languages, uh, if you use the uh, time function, they'll give you out a Unix timestamp in seconds and not in milliseconds. So rather than have to iterate through the data and multiply everything by 1,000 before I pass it to the library, I just let the library handle it in seconds. And uh, full STRF time based formatting. So you can actually, uh, that y axis, you can plot something using any uh, STRF time based uh, formatter. So I can show you an example. Okay. Time series. So this is the chart that I have, and uh, you see the y-axis there. Can everyone see this code here? So that's a time format string. I can change that to anything else. So let's see. Uh, y underscore j. And if I refresh that. It doesn't work, I know why. I don't have internet access. <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately I need to connect to why you, yahooapis.com, so we're not gonna see examples, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, th these, uh, these examples are linked from the slides, so if you go to my slides and you click on that, uh, you'll get it. Uh, the slides I'll put up on SlideShare as soon as the talk is over, so once I get back to the main building, I'll put it up on SlideShare. Um, let's go ahead, so you can also do uh, multiple series using a common x-axis, so uh, many times what I uh, find is, uh, so in the data that I look at, uh, I'll have uh, multiple dimensions uh, and a single um, control point, so for example the date is uh, the same across all my uh, data, but I have different types of data that I need to plot against that date. So it's uh, when you select it out of the database, what you get is a single row with uh, one date column and all your other columns that need to be plotted. So it's, it makes it really helpful if you can just pass this data structure that you get out of SQL, pass it straight to the charting library and get it to draw a chart. So that's exactly what uh, this does. It lets you take a schema and say, okay, I've got, uh, this is my X uh, axis and these, the rest of these are all my Y points. So go ahead and plot it and Flut will figure that out for you. So an example of what this data looks like. So we have a common X over there and uh, Y is different. Uh, it, it does some intelligent things. It tries, if you just pass it a data structure, it'll try and figure out which is your X axis and which is your Y axis. So it looks for common things like if uh, you have a field name X, then it takes that as the X axis. If you have a field name time or date, it takes that as the X axis. If uh, it can't figure that out, it'll take the first point as the X axis and the rest of them as the Y axis or it'll let you specify which one is your x-axis and which one's uh, your y-axis. Uh, what that means is you can pass 20 different dimensions and say only plot these four, right? And uh, it would do that as well. So how do you use it? And how am I doing on time? Okay. So you first create a div, uh, you can create any HTML element, any block level element that uh, you put onto your page where you want the chart to go and give it an ID. Uh, the ID can be anything, it just needs to be unique on the page. So I've given something like div ID equals placeholder. Uh, and then include your JavaScript. So the first thing you do is include EX Canvas uh, if you're using Internet Explorer. So that's a conditional include that's uh, supported only by Internet Explorer. Uh, which means that code looks like a comment to all other browsers. It looks like an include to IE. Uh, then include the JavaScript. So you first include the uh, YUI library. You need actually only, uh, so depending on what kind of chart you need, uh, you may actually need less than this data. So the Yahoo DOM event part is um, all that you need to draw charts. If you want to do time series, then you also need the data source, which ha includes the STRF time-based uh, formatter. Uh, the two of these together are pretty small. Uh, I did not actually check uh, the byte size of it, uh, but it is fairly small. And once you've done that, include uh, YUI plot. 
Uh, now, as of today, you, you probably need to download this code and include it on your own server, but I'm probably going to push it into the YUI gallery soon, so that should also be available through the combo handler, yeah? Okay, the question is, is this uh, URL valid for EX Canvas? So I know EX Canvas is available on uh, Google's CDN. It's not, as far as I know, it's not available on Yahoo CDN. So you could link to it from Google CDN or put it on your own server. Um, yeah, I would not uh, recommend combining EX Canvas and YY Flot because you don't want all your other users to have to download uh, all of EX Canvas when they don't need it. So uh, that's pretty much all you need to uh, initialize the data, and to initialize the, the chart. Now you need to get some data. So uh, you could get your data from a static array, or you could get it uh, uh, using a data source. So in YUI, we have a, a data source object that can pull data from various sources. It could be a URL. It could be uh, a static array, it could be a function that returns the array, it could be an HTML table that gives you the array. If it's a URL, that uh, data could be in XML or in JSON or in CSV format. So there's really a whole bunch of formats that you can get your data in and uh, pass it to the chart. So once you do that, you need to pass it to the chart. Uh, sorry, you need to configure your chart. So uh, flot, uh, so not just YUI flot, but flot on its own has really good defaults. So you could actually not configure it at all and have a really good looking chart. Um, this, uh, the default is to have lines on and uh, points off. But uh, sometimes I also like to have lines and points together. So put, uh, use uh, lines show true, points show true, uh, which means it'll show you lines as well as points. You could also say bars true in which case it'll turn off lines and points and draw a bar chart. Yeah. And then initialize it. So Yahoo widget flot, you just call it as a function, Yahoo widget flot, give it the ID of the div that you want to draw it into. The data, uh, the data needs to be in an array, and I'll explain that in a second. And the config object. And the config object is optional, so if you don't want to put that in, just leave it out and uh, it'll do a default. Now, why do we put the data in an array? And the reason is that Flot can take in multiple uh, data arrays and plot all of them on the same chart. So you could have uh, data one from your uh, first data source. Uh, like in looking at uh, performance data, I could get one data source which is uh, reading out my uh, hard disk performance and another one that's uh, reading out my network performance and plot them both on the same chart and possibly even give them different axes because the units are different and the scales are different. Does anyone know what the problems with uh, plotting multiple data dimensions on the same chart is? Probably done it in school with pen and paper, right? So your two data may be of different scales. That's one problem in that uh, uh, you might be measuring one thing in GBPS and another thing in KBPS. If you plot them on the same chart, your KBPS will be along the x-axis. So you need to scale them differently. Secondly is if you have too many uh, dimensions, your chart just has too many lines, and uh, eventually you run out of colors that look nice. <laughs> so colors is actually a pretty hard thing because uh, you need to pick colors that uh, are visible to everyone. There's uh, people who can't see certain color, uh, well, can't see the difference between certain color choices. So f the cool thing about Flot is it again, it picks good defaults. So if you just let Flot pick it, it'll pick your know, first four, first five uh, colors will be pretty good. So what are the changes I made in YUI Flot? So apart from actually uh, changing every call to jQuery to a call to YUI, and uh, sometimes I had to rewrite some of jQuery functionality in YUI because YUI did not have that functionality. Um, so it was actually really simple to change it. There were maybe like four or five lines of code where Flot was actually referring to jQuery, and I had to change those. Oh, well, I said, uh, not lines, but four or five different types of calls that I had to change. So it was simple to do, just do a global search and replace on the code and then run through all the lines that were replaced to verify. Uh, and it was based off Flot 0.5, which was released sometime last year. 
uh, Flood 0.6 was released at the end of last year, so November or December, I don't remember. Uh, which they added a few new features that I find pretty cool, but they're not in YUI Flot. Uh, one thing I added was logarithmic scales. So Flot itself only had linear scales, both X and Y axes were only linear. I added logarithmic scales to all axes, uh, which is actually more than what Flot has. So Flot has two axes on each side, so you can have two X axes and two Y axes. Uh, YUI Flot can have an unlimited number of axes on any uh, direction. It doesn't draw all of them, so you can only draw two, but you can have an infinite number of scales. Again, infinite uh, depending on the resources uh, you have to actually draw it on, uh, to, to actually store that in memory. Right? So, and the reason I added that was because I've worked with four dimensional data which is of different scales and needs to be uh, scaled differently on the same chart. So we have uh, more than two axes in each direction, all of which can support linear as well as logarithmic scales. So you can plot linear data and log data on the same chart. It's not advisable because it thoroughly confuses your users. <laughs> uh, another cool thing I added was axis labels. Uh, I did not add this myself. Well, I added the code myself, but it's based on something I saw in uh, someone else's implementation of uh, Flot, where now, uh, labels itself is just putting your, your numbers below the axis and on the left of the y-axis. But you also have an axis label which just says, okay, this axis is about this data uh, right at the bottom. Uh, not sure if the diagram has, it's probably after. Mm. Yeah, so if you look at this, you'll see a number at the bottom there. And that's uh, the x-axis label in series on the uh, left over there, which is uh, the y-axis label. So that's uh, something that was added, axis labels. Uh, point dropping, which I already told you about. So if you have too many points on a plot, it'll try and drop them. Now, if you're drawing a line chart, this really works out because if you're drawing lines and points, so it'll still draw the lines where those point, uh, points should have been, but it just won't draw the circle around the point. So you don't have just a, like a forest of points on the chart. And uh, uh, most important for me, I changed all the space indentation to tab indentation. <laughs> uh, some more things added, uh, time series. Uh, so the initial time series uh, accepts milliseconds uh, as the data value. I changed that to accept data objects and also use seconds rather than milliseconds. Again, I mention it's because uh, well, I write my backend code in PHP and Perl, uh, both of which will spit out Unix timestamp in seconds. Uh, rather than have to iterate through my data and change that all, I just like send the data straight to the chart and not have anything in between. Uh, full STRF time based date formatter. So Flot itself has an intelligent date formatter, but it's not based on STRF time. It's based on a subset of STRF time. Uh, I just, this was actually another pet project of mine. So I was, uh, when I was working with the Flash based charting library, I, I didn't like the way it was formatting dates. So I went and implemented STRF time in JavaScript and uh, released it under BSD license, which then YUI decided was good enough to put into YUI, so it's now part of the YUI library. So now since YUI had STRF time that I had written a few months before, I decided, hey, I'm gonna use it in every charting library that I work on. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's part of this as well. And uh, the thing I did with the STRF time library was it's uh, fully internationalized. So you can actually uh, print a date in any locale in the world except I don't know every single language in the world, so I did not implement the dates in every language in the world. But uh, it's like three lines of code to add your own locale, and then you can plot a uh, chart with your axis in, uh, I don't know, French or German or Korean or Bulgarian or Swedish or anything you want. Uh, I don't know how it works in right to left languages. <laughs> so, Things I'm looking at in the future. Okay. 
Um, first of all, move up to Flot uh, 0 0.6. So there's some new features. Uh, 0 0.6 has a plugin-based model. So if uh, jQuery itself has a plugin-based model and uh, Flot is one of those plugins for jQuery, Flot itself designed a plugin model, so now you can define plugins for a plugin for jQuery. <laughs> uh, so I like that model. Uh, I like it because uh, it lets other people add code to it without uh, having to modify the library itself, uh, which would make my job easier because I can then pull in uh, some of the Flot plugins and use them directly in YUI Flot without having to change them. Uh, why uh, Flot has a thresholds more, uh, feature. So, for example, uh, think of a finance-based uh, application or chart where you want to plot uh, everything above a certain level as green and everything below it as red. Or even in performance, if everything that goes above your SLA needs to be red and everything below your SLA needs to be green. So that's where the threshold feature comes in, where it says, uh, this is my uh, threshold, and Everything above it needs to be in this color, and below it needs to be in this color. And it's a pretty useful feature that uh, I'm thinking of adding in. I just can't figure out how I do thresholds for four dimensions. Uh, well, I mean, I have four different time series on a chart, because then I need to pick eight different colors. <laughs> uh, I have a hard time picking two. Uh, also, has stacked bars, which are useful. I don't have a need for it at the moment, but. Uh, there could be a need. So a stack bar is basically you have <coughs> so you have one bar and the next bar goes on top of that. So your data is you can see like the sum of the data as well as uh, individual data points. And it's useful when you're looking at an overall value. Uh, it's kind of similar to an area-based chart where uh, the values add up. So if you're looking at uh, requests per second across five different servers. Uh, you're primarily interested in what's your total request per second, so you look at the overall chart, but you can also see the size of each band, uh, which uh, tells you more data than just uh, the two dimensions of the chart. Step line charts are uh, useful. So a step line chart is, let's say you have two points, uh, one here and one here. Instead of just drawing a straight line between that, it draws one line that way and one line that way. So it's basically a discrete uh, jump. It, it's not a continuous chart. And it's useful if your data is discrete rather than continuous. Right. And I don't have a current use for that, but I can think of people who would. Uh, more things I'm looking at. So these are things that are useful for me. So error bars and candlesticks. Uh, again, when dealing with performance data, it's, you can't just say this is uh, the response time of that page, because it depends on how many measurements you've made and what's the error in that measurement. So you can say, OK, this uh, page has taken two seconds to load uh, plus or minus uh, 0 0.2 seconds. And you need some way of plotting that plus or minus 0 0.2 seconds on the same chart. That's where error bars and candlesticks come in. So uh, it's basically you, take, you have a point, and you draw a line going above it and a line going below it, and say, OK, that's my range of data. Or you can do other cool things like uh, shade the chart behind it uh, in a color uh, a sort of lighter color based on how much error there was on each uh, reading. Adding smoothing plugins. So again, if you take a time series, you, uh, which has, say, 100 data points, they might be pretty jagged. And that doesn't, uh, you don't really need to have that level of information. You just want to see the trend line. Is my performance going up or is it going down? So by adding smoothing to that, which uh, what it does is it takes a moving average. So take the average of three points or five points and plot that instead of actually plotting the data point. And that gives you a good indication of what's the trend of the data rather than uh, what the actual data is. Um, finally, upgrade to YUI 3. And once I do that, move it into the YUI gallery, which means uh, then Flot would directly be available through Yahoo CDN. So you can directly access it from there without having to host it on your own server which will be one less HTTP request, one less DNS lookup. <laughs> the things I learned, <coughs> uh, I was no expert JavaScript programmer before this, so uh, the first time I was uh, doing Flot, I did something like what's on the left there. I basically wanted to normalize the data, so I passed in the data structure, did some manipulation on it, and it worked perfectly, right? I was doing stuff, 
Then I wanted to add more code, which used that same data structure later and plotted a data table, and the data was completely different from what I was getting from the server. So it's because it was passed in my reference, and so when I was normalizing the data, I was normalizing the actual original data structure that I had. So internally now, I've changed plot to uh, work on a copy of the data. What that means is it needs to iterate through all the data once um, before it can plot it. So that kind of slows it down a bit, especially if you're going to redraw the chart multiple times. Uh, but I need to do that uh, anyway in order to check if uh, all your data points are valid. Like sometimes you might have uh, things that are not numbers in there, or you have too many points which need to be dropped. So all those things um, need to be checked. So I do it in the same loop. Uh, there's more to charts than drawing lines. So after I started doing this, I started getting more interested in statistics. So I've spent a lot of time on Wikipedia, which is where I'm learning statistics from. <laughs> but there's, there's also some pretty other interesting sites. So one of them I've listed here. So different visualizations for different types of data. And if you go to that, uh, that white paper, it's a really interesting one about uh, this guy's got a paper of how you visualize different kinds of data. And he's shown like if you have a population chart rather than just show a bar, if you show it in number of um, human figures, it's a little more understandable to the person who's reading the chart. So it's uh, once you start getting into this thing of actually designing the user interface uh, to the data, you need to think much more than just drawing lines to present it to the user. Uh, you're basically looking at summarizing this data visually. So when a user is looking at a chart, he doesn't want to know the actual numbers. If he wanted to know the numbers, he'd just print out a table and figure that out. He wants to know, is it going up? Is it going down? Is it green? Right. <laughs> so, and uh, you can plot more than two dimensions on a two-dimensional canvas. So an example is if you take a scattered plot, uh, you can just plot all the points where the x and y coordinates are, or you can plot bigger points at certain places and smaller points at certain places indicating that this data is more important than this data. And similarly, using error bars, you can have three dimensions on that two-dimensional data. Uh, you can rotate HTML elements using Canvas. So if you go back there, look at that series, it's actually printing upwards. I had no idea that was possible until I did this. So these are, this is how you do it in, uh, to work in all browsers. Uh, Moz transform rotate 270 degrees for all gecko based browsers. WebKit transform rotate 270 degrees for WebKit based browsers. And then those two lines for Internet Explorer, or you can do this one line for Internet Explorer. Um, so, yeah, it actually works in everything, including Internet Explorer 6 and above. Uh, one caveat though, when you use a filter in Internet Explorer, it tends to uh, execute that filter every time. Uh, you interact with the page, so with like mouse overs and scrolls and stuff, it's it's going to run that every time, which kind of makes it uh, slower. I don't, I haven't measured the performance of this particular filter uh, at all, so I don't know. So, all right, those are the things I learned uh, when working on this project. Uh, finally, how do you contribute? So, you go to GitHub. The projects on GitHub, GitHub.com/slash/bluesmoon/slash yui dash flot. I have the URL at the end. Uh, you fork it, make your own changes. You need to uh, put your changes under the BSD license. And uh, tell me about them through a pull request so I can pull them into my own uh, repository. Now, this code is available to everyone, but you need to download it through my repository or your own repository. I mean, you can totally just run your own fork of it and have your own changes and not ever put it back into my main tree. I have no problem with that, and you can distribute it on your own. Okay. Uh, if you want to get it into the YUI gallery, which is what I plan on doing, then you need to sign a Yahoo, YUI CLA. I have a few copies here if uh, anyone's interested in signing today. It basically says that uh, you are legally allowed to commit any code that you actually do commit. So like you haven't stolen it from someone or uh, SEO doesn't come and sue us sometime. <laughs> uh, and that makes the code available through the CDN. So you could get your uh, code changes into the Yahoo CDN, which makes it a, uh, it's a greater chance of it being cached uh, across the internet and uh, better performance through users. So that's the URL. Um, and uh, I have some stickers. 
laptop stickers. In case you were bored with my talk, uh, it's, thank you for <laughs> sitting through it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's a few people I'd like to thank uh, Jokin Mace and Philip Pace. Uh, Pape, uh, how do you pronounce it? Paps, right? Uh, yeah, they contacted me like a couple of weeks ago and uh, helped a lot with getting my visa and stuff, so <laughs> I wouldn't have been here. Uh, the guys who built uh, Flot, Yahoo yeah, Developer Network, and the YUI team for helping me out with uh, all my development work and stuff. So, I don't know, you want to pass these things around, or do you want to just come down here and pick it up? Yeah, I'll just leave it here. Uh, I don't know, so some people are lazy, you know. Let's <laughs> 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 down that way, and uh, I don't know, pass some down this way. <laughs> can pass it down there. Pass it down there. Um, yeah, so if you need to contact me, that's my details again. Yeah, questions? Does it support dynamic charts? Mm, kind of. <laughs> so through the event model, you can do that. Uh, the problem is uh, Internet Explorer is, again, really slow with uh, doing the redrawing, so I didn't build it into the library. But it's possible, and... Uh, I don't have an example yet. I'm, I'll publish an example showing how to do it. Right? Yeah. Do you support vertical bars? Do I support vertical bars? I don't know. Horizontal bars. <laughs> <laughs> so I, don't, I, I know it's in Flot. I don't remember if uh, that's a feature that was added after I ported it or before. But uh, in either case, it's going to be in uh, soon. Okay. Others? Yeah. Okay, so the question is, have I been in touch with the original developers to abstract out the jQuery dependencies and uh, maintain that as one, say, a plugin and the rest of Flot as its own library? Uh, no, I haven't been in touch with them. Uh, I, I might. I haven't thought about it yet. Yeah. So, so far, it was, uh, it was my pet project, and I put it up on GitHub because it was easy to do that. Um, but I have only one person who's ever forked the project so far, so I know there's only one other person using it. But uh, yeah, if, it, if there's more interest, then I might uh, get in touch with them and uh, do that. Yeah. Any other questions? Does anyone else need stickers? <laughs> you didn't get any? Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, I didn't get it. Say that again. Yeah, I, I didn't look at the Dojo charting library. I looked at uh, GNUplot. GNUplot? So GNUplot has a... Y'all didn't get it. Uh, so GNUplot has... Uh, it's, it allows you to translate your uh, GNUplot charts into JavaScript. And uh, it's interesting that way. But uh, no, uh, Flat was the uh, second one I saw, and I liked it immediately. So I kind of stopped my search. <laughs> Anyone want to sign the CLA? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sure.